Good afternoon. Uh, so today we are going to discuss the last uh, part of this lecture series, bakery and confectionery processing technology. Actually, we have discussed about sugar confectioneries and uh, some uh, other types of confectioneries as well. So chocolate processing technology is uh, also one of the very important topics under uh, bakery and confectionery industry. And I suppose that you have gone through these uh, lectures uh, chocolate uh, cocoa processing, I, I, I hope uh, that you know uh, the processing of cocoa. So anyway, I, am, uh, I will discuss uh, these things up to some extent. And uh, uh, the last week we have discussed AI, AI incorporated sugar confectionaries, how to develop marshmallows and chewing gums. And uh, also we have discussed how to improve these things. So value addition is one of the very important thing uh, in this industry. So as we have discussed, uh, the confectionery industry is uh, it's actually it is a, a slowly developing industry so uh, there are so many gaps you can start your own industry by adding more value to the existing food products and the competition is also a little bit uh, uh, comparatively low uh, than the other industries so uh, you have a very good demand space for confectionery uh, industry so I propose you to start a business in this industry. So uh, the chocolate processing industry, chocolate processing technology is actually a, a very interesting one because in Sri Lanka, we have very good chocolate, cocoa as the main ingredient of chocolates. And uh, you may heard that uh, the, the, uh, the UK people and other people, they loved our cocoa. That's why uh, they came to Sri Lanka. Uh, not only cocoa, our spices and all those things. And it's nutritional value and also the flavor. Chemical composition is very good uh, than the other the cocoa available in other countries. So uh, according to the literature, for the cocoa is considered as food of goods food of sorry food of god so it means uh, you can understand the value of cocoa uh, by referring to the this term right and uh, there are several varieties are available cocoa varieties are available and uh, among these varieties you can see there are three uh, important varieties right there are three important varieties in sri lanka trinitario is the uh, in Sri Lanka, Tinitario, which is a combination of uh, Criollo and uh, Forastero, is grown and it uh, resembles more like that the Forastero and Cocoa ports. And we normally export around uh, 100 metric tons, sorry, 1000 metric tons annually. So uh, there are three major varieties, and uh, we have. Uh, Trinitario variety in Sri Lanka. So uh, you may see in the cocoa pot and the cocoa seeds when you travel to central province, right? And uh, Criollo and uh, Forestero. You can see here in this slide, you can see the differences, right? In terms of color, this one, the first one white in color and the second one purple in color, right? Anthrocyanins and cocoa flavor. This is the, the, the four stereo. Uh, it is having the highest uh, uh, cocoa flavor, right? Strong, stronger flavor. And the production here also, it is also high, right? So uh, for a stereo is the more, the good one, according to the, by comparing to these two varieties, you can understand which one is the good variety. And uh, the flower pods and everything you can see in this picture. Uh, we have seeds, so I will show another pictures later. The terms, stalk, pericarp, musicarp, endocarp, seeds, you can see. And the diameters also you can see. Uh, the seed area, it is around uh, 1.3. Uh, centimeter but here sorry sorry it's wrong right here you can see the scale 
right? And then this one. So uh, shell is there, seed logs, uh, rootlet, everything you can see here. Not important, right? And the composition, it is very important. Composition of cocoa bean, this is also uh, deviated with the variety and the soil and the environmental condition. All those factors uh, directly affect on the its complete composition. But in generally, <clears throat> here you can see the fat percentage is around 50%. As a range, it is around 50 to 55. It means the cocoa uh, consists high amount of fat. Right? The oleic, steric, palmitic, and other types of fats. Uh, what do you call uh, uh, the fat varieties are available? Right? Among uh, these fat varieties, oleic is the highest one, prominent one. Right? And carbohydrates. Right? Carbohydrates, uh, basically, we, uh, they have sugar and fiber. Inside cocoa, it's around 31%. And protein also, they are. In around 11%. As a range, it is 10 to 15. Albumin, globulin, uh, prolamines, and glutalines. glutalines. So, the, likewise, uh, arginine, glutamine, and leucine like uh, proteins are there. So, uh, the, the total protein value amount is around 11%. Right? Polypenolic compounds are very important uh, in cocoa and minerals and vitamins. So, especially, especially Vitamin A, B complex, C, E, and uh, pantothenic acid. Those uh, are very important things are available in cocoa. Right? So, uh, what I want to highlight here is the cocoa bean consists with several nut nutrients. So, uh, you can see fat, carbohydrate, protein, uh, micro and micronutrients you can see here. So, uh, when we consider the fat amount, here you can see almost half of the composition, it is fat, right? As a range, it is 50 to 55, right? And uh, triglyceride, you can see, or like steric, palmitic, and other types. So, uh, this type of fat, uh, you may heard the oleic steric, palmitic, the type of uh, fatty acid available in uh, coconut oil, right? So there are uh, good uh, fat varieties available in the cocoa bean. So that's why we use uh, cocoa to produce some uh, several food products, chocolates and ice cream. So likewise, we, we are using cocoa uh, fat to get the texture, flavor, and the nutritional value of those products. And polypenolic compounds, you know, polypenols are very important. <clears throat> uh, when we move, when we, we discuss about the cocoa also, it consists high amount of polypenols. So uh, polypenols are uh, healthy nutrients. So it will help to, uh, it will provide more health benefits. And significantly, uh, polypenols are responsible for flavor development. Three types of polypenols we can see, we can observe in uh, cocoa, uh, catechins, anthocyanins, and uh, proanthocyanidins. So we call it as flavanols, right? Catechins are there, anthocyanins are there, flavanols are there. And uh, flavanols are prominent uh, as, a, as a polypenol. You can see the structures and uh, the flavanols it's a structure you can see here, right? It's structure. It is actually a complex structure, right? Palate group is there. Right? Likewise, uh, uh, different composition. You can see different structures. So, uh, but what uh, you have to understand here is it's structure. The flavonoid structure is a little bit complex one.
okay uh, and you can see uh, and uh, composition of uh, sorry, cocoa bean so as we discussed uh, in the previous slide uh, they are very important uh, we call it as uh, polyphenols. Instead of that, caffeine, theobromine, theophylline, and aromatic compounds are there. So caffeine, you know, it is actually a uh, energy boosting chemical. Uh, but fortunately, we have caffeine in both husk and the bean in, in cocoa. Right? So therefore, we can use uh, cocoa as an energy booster. Right? So, you know, uh, when we consume some energy um, boosting liquids and some drinks are available in the market, for all these products, you, you, you can see caffeine is there, right? But here, natural caffeine, you can get, uh, it is available in the uh, cocoa. Theobromine, it is uh, responsible for the bitter taste of cocoa, but when we are processing, when we start processing, then the uh, bitter taste will be uh, removed and reduced up to some extent. And theophylline is one of the uh, important chemical they are, and there are some aromatic compounds. You can feel the smell. You can you can feel just the smell of chocolates, right? So there are four types of aromatic compounds. So it means there are so many aromatic compounds. Here you can see only the groups, pyrazines, aldehydes, alcohols, and ketones. So it means the cocoa is a very good uh, source of uh, nutrition and energy boosting. And also uh, we can get it as a food, right? And uh, I'm not going to read all the size so you can read these things. It has high antioxidant potential. So uh, it is very good for our health and uh, for our diseases like cancers. And uh, it is source of uh, polyamines, right? Type of antioxidant. And uh, biogenic amines can also be found in cocoa. And some bioactive amines are also there. So we, we will be discussing these things later, right? So, uh, Let me discuss about cocoa production, right? Cocoa production and its application, those things are very important. So we have this uh, uh, golden tree, golden crop. So uh, we are going to use it uh, purposely. We are going to use it sustainably. So seed are the commercially important thing. But we have discussed caffeine is available both seeds and the peel, right? The main final product is chocolate, and there are some intermediate products, cocoa butter, liquor powder, and cocoa cake. Instead of using uh, as a food, we use uh, cocoa as, a, as an uh, ingredient for tobacco products, soap manufacturing, and some cosmetic development, cosmetic products. So you can see in some face washes and uh, skin whitening creams, cocoa is there, right? There are different applications. So uh, here you can see cocoa beans and cocoa liquor. How to get cocoa liquor from cocoa beans? We will be discuss. We will discuss these things and cocoa butter. Uh, we, we, here you can see separation of cocoa butter and cocoa powder from the cocoa liquor. At the end of the day, end of the process, you can get chocolates, right? Cocoa butter based chocolates and cocoa powder based chocolates. But in Sri Lanka, we have uh, mostly we have sugar, cocoa powder based chocolates, but uh, in uh, the problem is cocoa butter based chocolates are a little bit high in cost, but quality is very good, right? So uh, here we are using both uh, biological and chemical reactions, right? There are two types of reactions in post harvest processing. Uh, the first one is Microbiological microbes base, it means biological reactions and 
chemical reaction mean biochemical reactions right as a result of these uh, reactions we can get a good uh, raw material for chocolate manufacture right here you can see the process cocoa pod fermentation curing drying roasting grinding and pressing after pressing we can get uh, cocoa liquor right here you can see the very com common processes but there are some other specific processes you can see cocoa uh, pods here cocoa pod means pulp plus beans right you can uh, get a cocoa pod and uh, open it and you can uh, have a look on that then you can see uh, pulp is there and seeds are there then take these things out and let them to ferment right so fermentation means there are two reactions as we discussed biological reaction and chemical reaction biological reaction means fermentation right fermentation this naturally it is happening as a result of uh, fermentation and curing all uh, both process are both processes are happening occurring simultaneously but first fermentation will start then curing will happen right inside the bean then we have to dry it roast it and grind it ponching means uh, uh, to uh, it is actually a uh, texture smoothing process then tempering right here you can see some details then there is a figure so uh, now you have now you can understand how to produce how to get products first uh, take the pod the maturity level is very important we have to select the correct maturity level then let them to ferment and as we discussed there are two processes fermentation and curing then after that it will take few days around uh, uh, around 2 to 10 days right thereafter we can dry it roast it to uh, extend the flavor to extend it uh, you know what happened when we roast something then we knowing to remove uh, dust and other unnecessary particles then grind it right grind it and conching means smoothing the texture we will discuss right as we discussed earlier when we uh, when it comes to fermentation of cocoa there are two mechanisms right fermentation is a biological reaction series the other one is curing it is a chemical reaction series right it means it is a enzyme based reaction this is uh, the first one is a, a microbe based reaction so inside the seed right inside the cocoa bean chemical reactions are happening but uh, we call it as the the outer layer you can see a whitish layer uh, the fermentation will happen in there as a result of that uh, this uh, pulp will remove you can observe this texture of a cocoa seed it is a, as here you can see the seed here you can see seeds and uh, in between two seeds you can see a, a layer as a pulp so we use the microbial fermentation to remove that pulp right and you can see in this uh, inside the bean amino acid sugar uh, cyanidin peptides uh, theobromine caffeine like ingredient like chemicals we have discussed they are there then it will start uh, the enzyme reaction uh, and next you can see the microbiological reaction fermentation sugar fermented carbohydrate protein cellulose organic acid will ferment right you know what happened to sugar basically sugar convert into ethanol lactic acid and acetic acid you can get all these by product, uh, products and also carbon dioxide and h2o gas 
water vapor right so as a result this is actually a uh, as a result of this reaction series temperature will increase we will discuss later how it happens and this heat absorb to the inside to the bean and then again these reactions will uh, accelerate it. you know what happened when we increase the temperature then the reaction rate will be doubled when we increase the temperature 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 at 10 degrees of celsius then the reaction rate, rate will be doubled so you know the concept right so as a result of that it will provide temperature and here we can see sugar and microbes are also there so this reaction series will be happening right so what you want to have remember here there are two types of reaction reactions the first one is fermentation second one is curing fermentation is a type of microbial reaction set of microbial reactions and curing will be happening it, it is happened as a as an enzymatic reactions so the objective of uh, fermentation is to remove the pulp curing it will responsible for flavor and color development right the fermentation the most important post harvest process for the beans fermented cocoa beans provide fruity citrusy spicy and flowery flavors we will discuss how it happens it is a key stage in cocoa bean processing also fermentation determines the depth of the beans so as a result of fermentation the beans uh, also converted as a death bean right moreover it flavor it flavors a removal of the pulp surrounding the bean through a series of microbial reactions and the available sugar on the pulp is around 5 to 10 responsible for, for formation of flavor precursors so uh, i hope that you can remember we have discussed this is a flavor development and color development reaction curing right reduction in bitterness and astringency so bitter taste is there we have discussed in the first few slides as a result of fermentation we can reduce the bitterness and astringency also uh, it is uh, single in right we can reduce it development of color are initiated during fermentation finally the fermentation conditions may depend on the cocoa variety cocoa variety environment everything responsible for this fermentation process you can see uh, the fermentation state some pictures it will take around 25 to 48 hours after breaking the cocoa pod right it means one to two days for fermentation right there are two uh, there are several methods wrapped under large banana plantation leaves but basically you can see banana plant plant is there right and uh, heap method basket method box type method and batch process right you can see different methods but in any process all the processes you can see the banana leaf right there are four types of method heap method basket method box method batch processes but for all these methods we have to use banana leaf there are some other methods uh, three stage method in wooden boxes you can see first beans placed into the first compartment covered with banana leaves and gunny bags to keep the generated heat right you as we discussed temperature is very important to uh, activate enzymes to uh, accelerate the enzymatic reactions after 48 hours the resulting fermented mass transfer into second compartment and remain for another 48 hours right we are going to transfer the uh, slightly fermented beans into the other compartment and remain for 48 hours after 96 hours so it means there are four uh, the four days we have, we, have, we spent the mass transfer to the third compartment where it and allowed to ferment for up to 168 hours always covered by banana leaves and uh, burlap bags right to control the temperature Right here you can see. So I think it's clear. You can read these things again and again. I'm not going to uh, discuss in detail because I, I hope that you have learned these things before that. 
then the as we discuss biochemical reactions right micro bi bi microbiological reactions are happening and some biochemical reactions are also there in these two uh, fermentation and curing first stage it is anaerobic an anaerobic reaction as a result of that sugar will convert into ethanol and carbon dioxide right these are the types of yeast and you know the ph value is around uh, lower than 4 it means we need to have acidic environment right pectin also degrade as a result of yeast so the first stage it is an an aerobic uh, phase so yeast will convert sugar into ethanol and carbon dioxide in the second stage now we have ethanol right now we have ethanol and aeration also happening so citric acid metabolism will also be there then as a result of that ph value increase right then trigger in the growth of lactic acid bacteria in the first stage ph is below 3 now ph Uh, will increase ph has been increased and trigger the lactic acid bacteria growth it means boost the lactic acid bacteria growth and as a result of that pulp sugar fermented fermentation starts and form lactic acid acetic acid ethanol and carbon dioxide gas also producing so right now here you can see uh, lactic acid bacteria will form they will grow as a result of the this ph changes then what happen you can get lactic acid as a result of this lactic acid bacteria right meanwhile the acidic acid bacteria is also they are and ethanol uh, reaction as we discuss here it is also happening slightly and uh, by product carbon dioxide all these things are there but the uh, the critical one is lactic acid in the second stage then in the third stage now again aeration increases right then lactic acid bacteria are replaced by acetic acid bacteria first anaerobic bacteria then we start aeration the first stage acetic acid bacteria lactic acid bacteria now the, the further fermentation then lactic acid bacteria uh, start to generate right then ethanol converted into acetic acid right it is actually oxidation process so as we discussed earlier all these reactions are exothermic that's why temperature increases so you can see that now the temperature is around 50 degrees of celsius it is somewhat higher than the room temperature as a result of that flavor of the bean will start to develop and acetic acid bacteria play a key role in flavor precursor formation flavor development right so you can see in the first stage ethanol produce carbon dioxide and water second stage lactic acid then ph reduce now ethanol converted into acetic acid and temperature also increases right and flavor development also start right you can see uh, the microbes load microbial micro uh, microbe load from the first day to sixth sixth day right initially uh, you can see the yeast highest amount of yeast is there then with the time yeast also reduced then lactobacillus here you can see highest amount then it is also Uh, reducing acidobacter initially reduced but with the time in the third day it is the uh, the highest number of uh, acidobacter then it is reduced bacillus this one it is uh, reduced increase and after fourth day it has been increased so you can get an idea about the microbiological availability microbial availability with the dates right 
and fermentation. So as we discussed, uh, the, the, the bio biochemical transformation of inside the beans, uh, reduction of bitterness and astringency, and development of flavor precursors and free, free amino acid. Right? So you can read these things. Curing, it is around, uh, uh, we start it after three to five days after fermentation. It is actually a continuous process. Uh, some microbial me metabolic end products, lactic and ethanol, diffuses into the bean, diffuses into the bean. As a result of that, cotyledons will die. So we discussed uh, in this uh, fermentation, after the fermentation, the inside the bean, uh, it's, uh, it converted as the dead bean, right? So cotyledon will die. Over the production of acetic acid ceases and the further oxidation of acetic acid leads to slow increases in pulp pH up to about 5. The initial it is lower than 4, but now the pH has been increased up to 5. The pH value of 3 to uh, 3.8 initially you can remember and now it is more than 5 are required for the optimal activity of India endogenous uh, proteases and uh, bean degradation, all these things, it, the pH values are important. Protein, enzyme, polypenol compounds are responsible for flavor development, so you can read, right? And this is very important, right? This is very important. So here you can see before uh, fermentation and after fermentation, so cocoa, before fermentation, sensory attributes, cocoa flavor, you can see it is nil, very less. But after fermentation, you can see the cocoa flavor, it is very high. Bitter taste, initially it is high. So as we discussed, bitter taste is, it is actually one of the big problem in cocoa. Because tannins are also there, right? How to avoid it? After fermentation, so after the fermentation, you can see the bitter taste has been reduced. And astringent flavor also reduced. And floral taste has been increased. You can see initially there is no fl floral taste, same, uh, floral uh, taste, but after fermentation, you can observe a floral, floral flavor. So this is very important as a result of fermentation and curing. The characteristics of the beans has been, have been totally changed, right? You can see uh, before fermentation and after fermentation, the texture you can see, here also you can see with after two days. And uh, in this table, it shows that uh, the moisture percentage, unfermented you can see it is 4.2, after fermentation it has been reduced up to four. And protein also decreases. Initially, it is 21, then 80. Fat also decreased, right? Ash also decreased. But carbohydrate has been increased, right? You can observe uh, in all these days what happened to the uh, this uh, nutritional value. Initially, the moisture content 4.2, but after 21 days, it has been reduced up to 3.8. Protein, 21.6, but at, at the end of the process, 17.9. Fat, 55.2, now it is around 50. Ash, 3.5, now 2.9. But carbohydrate, initially 15.5, at the end of the process, 24.9. So you can see what happened. What is happening, these are the uh, technical things. With the fermentation, with the time, what is happening? what is happening to the nutritional value. So these things are very important. Right, then the second one is uh, drying. Uh, it is an extended uh, step. You know the purpose of drying is to reduce the moisture content up to some extent. Here the moisture content is, uh, we are going to reduce it up to 6%, right? And also as a result of that, astringency flavor and bitter flavor compounds will be 
they are remove unnecessary compounds and flavors so you know sorry astringency and bitter taste will be uh, removed so uh, as a result of fermentation and curing here also uh, the dry step also help to that and volatile and non volatile acid uh, acetic acid also reduced you know the acetic acid it's uh, uh, the taste is not good and facilitate for color development you can see the color now uh, the, the, there are several changes right sun drying is possible solar drying is possible mechanical drying is possible right flavor formation is, is there and microbes you know when we increase the temperature and reduce the moisture contents the unnecessary microbes will also uh, decreases and they will remove so therefore drying process is again important then the roasting you know the temperature is 90 to 120 you can select it based on the variety right so the roasting is a process for flavor development right basically flavor and color development roasting will be used right and remove moisture also remove as a result of this temperature and as an example you can observe the differences between coffee and roasted coffee and sesame and roasted sesame so the flavor is totally different and texture is different moisture content is different here also uh, all these things are happening right grinding so we have discussed grinding convert cocoa beans into a small particles however due to the heat generated during this grinding cocoa particles melt down and convert into a thick liquid called as cocoa mass, bitter chocolate or chocolate, chocolate liquor. We call it as cocoa mass or bitter chocolate or chocolate liquor, right? And this is very important, the solid, solidification temperature. It is 30 degrees. This solvent is not sweet, right? It is somewhat bitter one. We have reduced the bitter compound, but still it is uh, somewhat bitter. Right? So, you know, the when we are grinding, temperature will be there as a result of the uh, grinding uh, mechanism. So, it has, it will, it, it change, the texture change from solid to liquid, right? Then we tend it, uh, then we uh, place it for a, around a few minutes in under 30 degrees of Celsius. Again, it will convert as a solid, right? You can see the pictures here. Right? These are the characteristics, cocoa butter, it is a uh, colorless one, cocoa powder, you know, uh, it is readily available in the market, chocolates, right? These are the major products and you can see their characteristics also, right? Then cocoa pressing, uh, how to get the cocoa butter from the liquor, it is, we call it as a pressing and uh, we, when we press the cocoa, Cocoa liquor, we can get cocoa butter and the cocoa press cake, right? Tapi dang pol mili ko hamo pol kiri saha produce yano na yung wagi making cocoa liquor ka press kara hamo. We can get cocoa butter and the cake, right? So you can read these things. Then conching in chocolate processing, conching is very important to smoothen the texture, right? So you can imagine the texture of chocolates. Right, it is very smooth texture. Right, so conching will help to uh, prevent uh, crystal formation. So you know the uh, in the sugar confection, it is also it is very important to stire. Right, stirring is very critical. So as uh, as we discuss here, they are here we are doing conching to smoothen the. Texture, we have uh, different machines for conching process. Right? After conching, we can get chocolates. Right? So, so these are the, these you can uh, see the summary of chocolates. Right? How to get the cocoa powder and chocolates. So you can read uh, how to get these products. And there are cocoa based products. They are available in the market. Plain cocoa, milk, cho milk chocolate, uh, sorry, plain chocolates, milk chocolates, and white chocolate. We call it as plain chocolates, we call it as dark chocolates. It means uh, it is only cocoa. In milk chocolates, definitely there should be milk. White chocolate, 
What do you mean by white chocolates? In this diagram, you can see cocoa liquor, plain, cocoa solids, and uh, cocoa butter. Cocoa solids, you can get cocoa powder and uh, cocoa cake, right? When we press cocoa liquor. And cocoa butter, when we use press cake and butter and sugar and vanilla, then we can get dark chocolates. And milk, we, are, we, we use milk as an ingredient here for milk chocolates. But in white chocolates, we are not using press cake. Only cocoa butter, sugar, and milk. Right? These are the differences. Right? The taste, everything, texture also different. But all these three products we use cocoa butter and sugar. Right? But press cake, press cake means it's it's have, it's have, it is having the color and the bitter taste. So cocoa taste. So we are not using uh, press cake for white chocolates. Right? So these are things we have to discuss under this uh, module. So I hope that uh, you have uh, now you are in a position to do something new in sugar confectionaries. So we have discussed sugar confectionaries and behavior of sugar. All these things we have discussed, right? Uh, how to uh, develop confectionaries, how to develop chocolates. And now you can think how to develop uh, sugar confectionaries and chocolate-based confectionaries together. Right? How to use these two technologies together. Likewise, uh, you can determine, you can develop new products. Right? right? So, and we, we can use sugar and chocolate to develop some other products as well. Not, not only food products, some other food, some other products, right? So, uh, as you are technologist, it is very important to think on these things and uh, you have to read all these things carefully and get the things, get the technical details available here. But it is very important to uh, imagine new think new uh, concepts, right? In your paper also, uh, there are some theory parts to answer, so, but uh, the other parts, most of the questions are about practical things. So you have to read the paper carefully, read the question two, three times carefully. Right? There are uh, very uh, general English, general language also very uh, easy to understand. Right? So please read the questions carefully and give your answers. Sometimes the question is totally different to the your lectures. Sometimes I may ask about tea, but uh, we have discussed only sugar confectionaries and chocolates. So I, I may ask about tea or uh, coffee, right? But what you have to do is please uh, uh, use the things you have learned through these lectures, then apply those knowledge to the, the question, right? You can write or anything but justify these things. You can write anything, but it is very important to justify these things, right? As an example, I may ask a question, how to add a value to ginger by using your knowledge on confectionery products? Then what you have to do is, you may think ginger, we, 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 uh, there, there is no, even there is no word ginger in this lecture series. So how to do this? These out of syllables, no. So you can use ginger and develop ginger confectionaries. So you can extract ginger and put into uh, chocolates. Then you can uh, get ginger flavored chocolates, flavored chocolates. So likewise, you have to read the questions carefully. All these questions are belongs to the LOs and the uh, things uh, we have discussed on, in these lectures, right? I have carefully, uh, make the questions, right? All these questions are original questions. So uh, moderated paper you can uh, get. So therefore, uh, so all the lecturers have been gone through all the questions. So uh, we have discussed together all the papers. So there are no more, no more errors. We hope that the, all the papers are Excellent, are in an excellent condition. So therefore, uh, don't worry and read all the questions carefully and the guidelines also. Then give your answers, right?
uh, so uh, i hope that uh, you all can get very good marks so you have only three slides sorry three lecture series for my side so uh, the slide numbers are maybe around uh, 50 slides for all these lectures so you can easily read those things and uh, And uh, you can get an idea and technical details you can get, right? So I hope that all these things are very clear. So uh, your assignments are really good and uh, we think uh, the papers and questions will be very good. And uh, please apply your knowledge carefully and as please uh, think that, uh, please behave like a technologist, right? Always think like a technologist. Uh, you can write or any answer, but justify your answer. It is very important, right? And do not try to uh, write half or one page answers for my papers. You can write only several uh, points, several important points, that's enough, right? Okay, thank you very much for joining and uh, hope you all can get very good marks and I believe that you have get, uh, you have get something from these lectures about confectionaries and chocolates. So thank you very much. If you have questions, please email or ask and I, we, we can do another session, revision session before the exam also. Thank you very much.